Okay, who's ready to talk Resident Evil? Let's go. I'm zooted on G Fuel and ready to share more of my wisdom. And I'm just dying to hear what incredibly thought-provoking and articulated shits Donald has to take on more of my favorite games. All right. Well, I was thinking we'd do a shorter one today and just cover the mainline numbered titles. That sound good to you guys? That's fine with me. Let's just get this over with. Cool. We'll go in order of release. So first up is Resident Evil, the OG. What do we make of this one? Personally, I think it's fun and charming, but generally doesn't hold up very well. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's basically been wholly replaced by the remake. Uh, objectively, I'd say this is F-tier material, but considering the legacy it left behind on the franchise, not to mention survival horror in general, I think we can bump it up to a C. Honestly, I have to agree with you. This game didn't age well. The plot was great, but it was utterly destroyed by the writing and voice acting. But it did walk so the rest of the franchise could run. So I think C-tier is fine. All right, we're off to a good start. Next on the list is the original RE2. What do we have to say about this? This might seem a bit contradictory, but I'd actually call this one a B tier at least, maybe even an A tier. Oh. Yeah, sure, its graphics have aged, but nearly all aspects of RE2 have held up better than RE1. Its backgrounds feel more detailed, and its writing and voice acting, while still amateurish, aren't nearly as piss poor as RE1. The RPD was also more memorable than the Spencer Mansion, in my opinion. Yeah, and one of the best things about the first game was the option to pick between two different characters, a mechanic that RE2 expanded and improved on. Leon and Claire have unique story scenarios, and some of the decisions you make during the game affect the other character's scenario. On top of that, both characters can play through either scenario, so it's almost like there's four different campaigns. I can fuck with that. I don't really agree with the RPD being more memorable than the Spencer Mansion, but otherwise I agree. Maybe not A tier, but B tier is good. Yeah, I'm fine with B. The more I think about it, the more I think A tier, but B tier is still acceptable. Bet. I gotta say, this is going well. Honestly, this is a nice change of pace. I never thought I'd see the day, but it seems we finally found a series we're like-minded on. Okay, next up is RE3. I think this one is just as good for the most part. Maybe better in some areas. For sure. Probably B tier. You're out of your goddamn mind. Here we fucking go. RE3 was a downgrade from two in every way. That's absolute horseshit. No, shut up. Three is the worst game in the entire OG trilogy. What could possibly be that bad about RE3? Crapcom really said, Hey, you know those annoying-ass Mr. X encounters in RE2? Where you have to blow a ton of your ammo on an unkillable monster or take a few hits from him while just trying to get to the door? What if that was the whole fucking game? Skill issue. Nuh-uh. To be fair, you get some pretty sick items if you down Nemesis. Big deal! You can waste all your ammo multiple times, making the rest of the game harder, just for a magnum you'll never use, because you're saving it for when you, quote, really need it. Bro, that take is whack attack. Nemi drops a ton of super useful items, like the first aid box. Whack attack? They also got rid of the option to choose between two different characters. RE1 started it, two improved it, and three threw it in the goddamn trash. Well, it did have the Carlo section. So what? The first two games did that too. Carlos' section is longer and more involved than the side characters from one and two. Well, that's not as good as Carlos having his own separate scenario from Jill, which is what it should have been. Honestly, I like this game being a more Jill-centric story. She doesn't get enough spotlight in this series. Couldn't agree more. Oh, for sure. A truly sad Jill's state of most affairs. Appreciated sandwich. Besides, it didn't really need to expand on two that much. Technically, RE3 was originally a spin-off. It was only rebranded into a mainline entry late in development for corporate reasons. Also, are we just not going to talk about the live selection feature? Having the player make split-second decisions various times throughout the game that actually change the story in interesting ways does wonders for replayability. Very true. Whatever, this game is F-tier all the way. I'll tell you what, you say F and we both say B, so we'll just call it C-tier. Fine. This is such bullshit. Okay, next up is Remake. Easy A-tier. Based, I mean, this game is just the original, but it actually looks good and doesn't have dying cats for voice actors. Remake is good, but A-tier, really? What? This game has some of the most cryptic puzzles in the series, and not in a good way. How the hell are you supposed to know to blow the dog whistle, specifically in the West Terrace, to call two dogs, one of which is wearing a collar, inside of which is hidden the key to progressing the game? It literally hints to do that in the crumpled memo. Maybe if you actually read the documents, you wouldn't have so much trouble. If I wanted to do a shit ton of reading, I'd pick up one of my several copies of Art of the Deal. Why would I go around reading everyone's diary while trying to survive a zombie outbreak? Because that's why you're there, dumbass. You're literally a police officer doing an investigation. Hey, don't say the P word. Have some respect. I apologize for that, Barack. 
What? The fact that you have to put thought into the puzzles is the point. That's one of Remake's best qualities. Whatever, I still think it's good, just not A tier. So where would you put it? Mm, maybe B. Okay, we'll round it out to an A minus then. That whole digression just to add a minus, SMH. That brings us to RE0. Where are we putting this? Hmm, what do you think, Joe? What, why the hell do you suddenly care about my opinion? That's pretty sus, Don. What, I just think you have some good thoughts in your head and I'm curious to hear your opinion. Bullshit. You just want to know if I like it so you know whether or not to shit on it. You say your opinion first. Well, honestly, the, the truth is that I've never actually played it. Oh. Uh, sorry, my bad. It's okay, Joe. Don't sweat it. So, what do you think, Joe? I haven't played it either. Are you shitting me? No, I just never really got around to it. You go ahead and just put it where you think it should go, Brock. Fuck, I haven't played it either. I was hoping I could fake it by hearing what you guys had to say. What do you say we just put it in off the screen tier and pretend it doesn't exist? That works. That brings us to Resident Evil 4. RE4 is GOAT. The gameplay is amazing and Chad Leon is so charismatic and cool. Easily S tier. If by S you mean shit, then I agree. The gameplay has aged like you and Leon isn't charismatic. He's constantly making misogynistic, downright sexist remarks toward all the female characters. Don, that uh, sounded uncharacteristic coming from you. What are you talking about? I respect the shit out of women. They're the givers of life. Without women, who would take care of our children? There it is. Also, what the fuck are you talking about? RE4's gameplay is lit. No cap. Tank controls are shit. What? After every game we've covered so far, that's your criticism? Tank controls? Yes. I never liked tank controls in any of the previous games either, but at least they made sense when paired with fixed cameras. And even then, some of those games actually allowed you to optionally turn off tank controls, which is what I always did. Are you fucking kidding me? I don't really like tank controls either, but they're not that bad. Take several seats. Everybody simps so hard for this game, but it isn't even that good. And its writing is cringe. Wake up and realize that. No thanks, bro. Its writing is hilarious and iconic. Joe, back me up on this. Joe? You still there? What's the matter, Joe? Joe, are you all right? Holy shit, Don. I, I think you killed him. What? Oh, no, dear. Joe, I'm sorry. Jesus. Barack, cut the recording. I, I'm calling 911. Uh, uh, okay, so it's been a while since we last recorded, guys. Um, unfortunately, Joe suffered an aneurysm. Don't worry, he's okay and doing much better now. In fact, he's actually agreed to come back and help finish the tier list. He's here now. How's it going, fam? The last thing I remember was Donald calling RE4 shit. Then all I saw was red. Next thing I knew, I was waking up in the hospital. Joe, I just want to say that I'm truly sorry for causing you such trauma. If there's anything I could do to help you with your recovery, please don't hesitate to ask. Admit RE4 is S tier. No way, fag. Donald, what the fuck? What? He asked of me the impossible. You're a bitch, Donald. Resi 4 fucks and you know it. It's one of the most influential video games of this millennium. And that influence is still seen to this day in the RE series and video games in general. It practically invented the over-the-shoulder shooter. Nope, you are wrong and biased. I win. Bye-bye. Also, Ashley is annoying as all hell. Skill, Skill issue. issue. It's also one of the most in-depth and interesting RE games to speedrun. The Dipman glitch is one of my favorite speedrun tricks ever. Dead ass. Dipman is pretty poggers. Well, I'll give you that. The Dipman glitch is pretty awesome. Exactly. And also the- Any glitch that lets me get this piece of shit game over with faster is great in my book. Fuck you, Donald. S tier. I also think S tier. D tier at best. Fine. We'll split the difference again and make it an A tier. A tier? How is that splitting the difference? If it were just you and Joe, the middle ground would be B. I also say S, so that makes it A. Sims, the both of you. Just get to the next game before I have another aneurysm. Okay, RE5 is next. B tier. Not a single word that exits your mouth makes sense. RE5 is literally just RE4, but worse. Worse? Better controls and a story that can actually be taken seriously are worse? You're losing it, Joe. RE4's story wasn't supposed to be taken seriously, dipshit. That's what made it unique. It was a satire of campy, dumbass action stories. You know, stories like RE5. Also, who could possibly take RE5's story seriously? Have you just forgotten about the boulder punch? Can't help but notice you didn't bother arguing with the controls being better. So what if Five's controls were better? Everything else about it was ass. It wasn't scary at all. Not even a little bit. The devs copied four so hard, but they only copied the action segments. 
Four had a lot of action, but it balanced it out with plenty of scares. Scarier game does not equal better game. That's whack attack. Is that your new little catchphrase? Maybe it is. I'll say what I want. Well, what about its inventory system, Don? It was a major step down from RE4's attache case. Oh, boo-hoo, you can't pause the game and play Tetris instead. I can't believe you right now. Fuck it, just put me down for D tier. I want this shit done already. Okay, well, I don't think it was that bad. I'd say C, which aligns well with your picks anyway. Okay. Next up is RE6. F tier. Wait, what? I can't believe you love five so much, but actually dislike this one. No one likes six, Joe. Glad we agree on this, at least. Holy shit, guys, what the fuck? RE6 is not that bad. Sorry, Barack, but any game that makes me do a QTE to open a damn door is a fat F in my book. Resi 6 is truly the moment Resident Evil jumped the shark. Guys, I know 6 went a little crazy, but underneath all the bombastic action is some seriously good moment-to-moment gameplay. Good gameplay? How is taking away the player's option to run for several minutes at a time good gameplay? Come on, bro, that's not the whole game. Besides, it just does that to build up ambiance. It wouldn't be scary if the player was just sprinting through the halls. Good RE games don't need to take running away from the player to build ambiance. When you walk in RE2 Remake, it's because you're too nervous to run, not because the moment is supposed to be spooky. Yeah, but what about the actual combat? It slaps harder than your dad on report card day. Rolling around on your back while shooting zombies was hella fun, and its context-sensitive melee kills were fire. Its combat was fun when considered in a vacuum, and that's it. The rest of the game is trash. Go watch Neryl's RE6 review. He explains it better than I ever could. Bro, if you're going to be like that, then go watch the Gaming Brit Show's RE6 review. See? I can do that, too. You're tripping. No. I feel like I haven't talked in a while, but I still agree with Joe. Would you guys at least give me a C tier on this? I don't agree with C, but I suppose I can live with that if you really like this game. Thanks, man. Well, I don't want to look like an asshole, so I guess I'll allow that, too. Okay, next up is RE7. I'm just going to say it. I think this game is A tier. Couldn't agree more. 7 took the series in a whole new direction while also being a great return to form. 7 is crap. This is giving me a headache. Not a fan of the first-person camera. Resident Evil has always featured main characters with distinct character designs and charismatic personalities. Ethan Winters has neither of those things. Well, that's because Ethan was supposed to be a blank slate character for the player to project on. What a bunch of crap. REMCs have never been blank slates, so what was the point of that? That's whack attack. Ethan may not be the most... Hold on, Joe, can we talk about whack attack? It's not landing like you want it to. It makes me cringe every time you say it. You're the one who's cringe here, Donald. No, Joe, he's right. Whack attack has to go. You tried it, it didn't work, that's fine. Move on. Jesus, fine. No need to break my balls about it. Can't break what doesn't work in the first place. Eat a dick, Donald. Anyway, look, I know Ethan is literal cardboard, but that doesn't make the game bad. RE7 was about horror. For the first time in over a decade, RE was actually trying to scare its players. Now, I know that means something to you, Joe. Yeah, and this game not only saved the franchise from mediocrity, it also introduced the series to a whole new audience. Yeah, a whole new audience of fucking casuals. Bruh. And how is it a return to form? Psycho Hillbillies is such a huge departure from zombie outbreak. RE has always added new BOWs. That's nothing new. And by the way, storage chests... Archaic saving devices, backtracking, keys with a unified theme. Seven even had a puzzle where you had to replace a mounted shotgun with a broken one. And on Madhouse difficulty, there are limited saves. Can you think of even one quality from the original games that isn't present in Seven? Fun. Bruh. You know what else? One of Resident Evil's best qualities are the game's incredible replayability. But RE7's 35-minute walking simulator of an intro makes me dread the thought of picking it up again. That shit puts me to sleep every fucking time. You sure that's the game's fault, Sleepy Joe? Son of a bitch. I knew that was coming from the moment I said it. Can you go one damn video without calling me Sleepy Joe? When it stops being funny, sure. It was never funny, dickhead. It is a little bit funny, Joe. Don't encourage him, Barack. Lamau, also, can we take a step back? Ethan isn't cardboard. He's a loving family man who will do anything to protect his loved ones. Bullshit. He cares about Rose. I'll give you that. But he doesn't give two shits about Mia. Didn't you find it weird that after finding Mia, his wife who has been missing and presumed dead for three years, all he had to say was, what's going on, in the most unenthusiastic voice possible? That's only because Ethan is a blank slate character. He obviously cares for Mia. After all, he fought through a hundred terrifying monsters to save her. No, he drove to Louisiana to pick her up. 
He had no idea what he was getting into. Saving her was merely a fortunate side effect to saving his own dumb ass. And even then, it was a 50-50 toss-up between saving her or some chick he just met. Okay, fine, Ethan is mid, but the rest of the cast makes up for that. Yeah, that's true. Jack is one of the most entertaining villains in the series, and Marguerite is scary AF. d tier. sorry, not sorry. Fine, but I don't like it. Ditto. That rounds out to an A-. minus. Okay, next up is RE2 Remake. I think this is a straight-up masterpiece. S-tier, no question. Absolutely. Okay, I hear you. I do, but this game cut a little too much from the original for me to consider it S-tier. Please, Joe, I beg of you, don't do this. I'm sorry, Barack, but I must. They cut the giant spiders. They cut the giant moth. They cut the evolved liquor. They cut the giant pussy plant. What? They cut the zapping system, and they watered down scenario swapping. And you know what the kicker is? They didn't even really add anything. I was so hyped to fight crimson heads in the RPD, but no. What about the different versions of Tofu Survivor or the Ghost Survivors? Okay, those were pretty cool, but the main story mode still feels watered down, especially the alligator boss. RE2R is great, but as a remake, it didn't quite live up to my expectations, and for that, I gotta give it a B tier. Well, fuck. There goes another masterpiece into A tier. Holy shit, at least we're almost done. Next up is 3 make. S tier. No. You are not about to tell me that 3 make is S tier. What's not to love? You're a menace. Three Make is a great game. Beautiful game. Probably one of the best games. You're fucked in the head. S plus tier. No, I can't believe you. You're blatantly lying to me. Three Make is the worst remake of all fucking time. It's short as hell, even by Resident Evil standards, because it cut out half of the original game's content. Even RE2R had some restraint. For fuck's sake, it cut the graveyard, clock tower park, and old factory sections. Three Make butchered its source material harder than you butchered the American dream. Oh, ha ha. Resorting to insults because you have nothing of value to say. Who cares that it butchered the already crappy source material? Besides, it added new sections to compensate. The only sections it added were boring retreads of two remake so the devs could reuse its assets to save time and money. Yeah, who wanted to play another shitty sewer level? And don't even get me started on Nest 2. Nest 2. Fuck. They could have actually called it Nest 2. Electric Boogaloo. And it wouldn't have sounded any more stupid than it already does. Peak laziness. Because that's all 3 make was. A fast, lazy cash grab. It may have cut a lot of content, but it did that for the sake of pacing. There's never a dull moment in 3 make. The whole game is a dull moment. I'm not fucking done. The game's writing is peak. Best writing in the series. This ain't Resi 4. Shut the fuck up, Joe. The characters are witty. The story is extremely well paced. And have you ever stopped bitching about the cut content for long enough to appreciate the detail that went into this game's continuity? It shows you how Marvin got bit. It shows you how the officers in the West Wing of the RPD died. It has a hidden radio broadcast by Kevin Ryman from Outbreak. Such wonderful attention to series lore and continuity. If you examine Brad's ID card... It looks exactly like the ID cards from the character selection screen of RE fucking one. The original RE3 did that too, dipshit. Yeah, well, the original RE3 sucks dick. You suck dick. Which brings me to my final point. Carlos. God damn. They did not need to make him that daddy, but they did. I mean, I'm not gay, but... Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I am gay. Remake Carlos made me gay. S tier. I have to admit, that was one hell of a glow up. What a snack. Understatement of the century. He's a full five star meal. Carlos has high key big dick energy and he dummy thick AF. Joe, he's speaking my language right now. No one here is denying that three make Carlos is the most bangable Resident Evil character, but you can't seriously be agreeing with him on this. I'm just saying, Trump makes some good points. Where the fuck am I? What kind of bizarro Twilight Zone dimension did I slip into where three make is put up on the same pedestal as RE4 and 2? Calm down, Joe. I never said I agree that it's S-tier. I just think 3 Make is a good game in its own right. Still, though, the way it disrespected the original is unforgivable. Plus, no Mercenaries mode. I'll give this game a C-tier, but it doesn't deserve anything higher than that. Boo! You know what? Fine. I'll give you a C-tier, Donald. Out of pity. But I'd literally rather vote for you than allow it any higher than that. Fine. You both say C-tier? Well, I say S-tier. Guess we'll split the difference and call it an A-minus. Sucks to suck, losers. Barack, I changed my mind. I want to put it in F tier. Yeah, I also think F tier. Guess we'll split the difference and call it C tier. That's such bullshit. That cannot be allowed. Keep whining. The only good thing that came out of 3 make was that one cutscene. That's it. Which one? You know which one? There are a lot of cutscenes in that game. You're going to have to be more specific. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's just move on to the next game. Ominous, but I agree. We should move on already.
The final game on this list is Village. You mean Resident Evil 8? Yeah, okay, Boomer. It's shit. What? For as much as you dust your pants over RE4, I'm surprised you hate this one. Its similarities to RE4 are just bullshit fan service. It still has every problem I had with 7. Untrue. You said you didn't like that Ethan was a blank slate in 7. Well, the devs heard you and gave him a personality in Village. They didn't give Ethan a personality in 8, they just made him talk more. And I honestly hate that because it just reinforces 10 times over how utterly unclever and white bread he is. Nah, Joe, that's whack attack. Nice one, Barack. What the? This hey. game is S tier, Joe, just face it. No, the only reason you like it is because Lady D's tits are as endowed as your fat ass. Oh, so now you're body shaming me too? Pretty cringe, Joe. It's 2023. Get woke already. Those are some pretty sweet milkies, to be fair. You're a man of true quality, Barack. And no one ever seems to talk about it, but Queenie D has a massive dumpy in the back, too. Ooh, yeah! I love the mods that swap the knife out for a fly swatter. Going around smacking... You beta male cucks are pathetic. I'm as Sigma as they come, Joe. But fine, just tell us your rank and we can end the video. D, just like seven. I'm gonna say A. Solid S tier? Okay, that brings Village to a B tier. Are you fucking kidding me? Not a single game in S or F tier? What a colossal waste of fucking time. Is this really our final conclusion? Resident Evil is just a mid-series? No, I think we're just mid-content creators. Well, that's just great. No RE fan with even the slightest hint of taste would agree with this bullshit list, and I had an aneurysm for nothing. Also, I thought you said this was going to be a shorter one, Barack. Feels like we started this weeks ago. We did. I had an aneurysm. Yeah, I could go for an aneurysm right about now. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, it's okay, Barack. It's not your fault. Look, I, uh, I suppose things got a little more heated than they should have. I'd like to apologize for my behavior earlier. Well, that's very big of you, Donald. Uh, I'm sure we've all said some things we don't really believe, but, hey. but the, the important thing is that we can move past all that. Well said. And hey, RE4 Remake isn't quite out yet. But what do you all think of the Chainsaw demo? Fantastic. You know what? I agree with you, my friend. It is great. Thanks, bro. That means a lot coming from you. Unlike the original, see ya, nerds! You fucking shit ass! You fucking believe that guy? Don't let him get to you so much, Joe. Whatever. Speaking of the demo, I'm gonna go play it again. I have yet to beat Mad Chainsaw Mode. I'll see you later, dude. Not so fast, Joe. I have to know. You weren't talking about the Drain Demos cutscene earlier, were you? My brother in Christ, please tell me you weren't talking about the drain demo scene. You fucking sick.